Hi everyone, and again, Sylvia here. Today, our reading is quite exciting. We find ourselves in 2 Kings chapters 8, 9, and 10, um, and we're also in Chronicles 21 and 22. And we are all over the place reading excerpts from various ones. But here is the thing that I ponder the most, and the thing that I ponder is, what the world? How did they get to where they are? You know, when we realize that the tribe of Judah is the one whose kings, pretty much, they had some good ones, they had some really good ones, they had some not so, but they didn't have any real, real bad ones like they did in the nation of Israel. And when we look at our reading, we see that Elijah, uh, Elisha warns uh, Ahaziel's father of what's going to happen, Joram, because he was following after evil practices, doing the wrong thing. He even tells him that God is going to cause him to have a condition with his enters, and as a result of that, he's going to die from that. Amen. I ponder and I wonder, did the son, I know he was young, but he was, was he not able to see the excruciating things, the pain that his father went through? But here's the thing that happened as a result of that. See, it is about choices. And when we make the wrong choices, it affects our entire family. And this family was affected. The Bible says that God purposed on anointing someone to not just take out the king over Israel, Jehoram, but also Ahaziel as well. Why? Because his mother, he was, his mother was the daughter or of Ahab and Rehab and, and Rahab, I mean, sorry, Jezebel, let me get that right, Ahab and Jezebel and her father, Jezebel's father, which means that Athaliah's grandfather was a king. So they came from a royal line, but it was a wicked royal line. Things that we need to ponder the breadcrumb is, it does matter who we marry. It does matter who we associate with, who we join ourselves to. Because ultimately, the son was relying on his mother who came from a wicked lineage. And so everything that he was being told was absolutely wrong. Again, breadcrumb, I want to emphasize, it matters who we join ourselves with, who we marry, and who is whispering. Because he who holds your ear ultimately will hold your destiny and your life. That's why breadcrumb, the one that we need to be listening to is the Holy Spirit. And we need to associate ourselves, surround ourselves with like-minded, like-speaking, like-believing people. Because God is God. And he is righteous. Now, here's the other thing I want us to understand. When it says that God anointed Jehu, and he did, he had him anointed. You know, Elisha is the one who sends a prophet to anoint him and so that he could destroy the house of Ahab, Jezebel, so that God could get uh, vengeance is his, says the Lord, so that the Lord could get vengeance for his prophets and for his people in general. God will only tolerate evil for so long. And his righteous judgment requires a response. Here's the breadcrumb. God is not wicked. He's not evil. So he cannot do those things. But his righteousness requires judgment and he will do so. So he appointed a prophet. He, I'm sorry, a prophet to go and anoint Jehu so that Jehu could bring to pass what God had prophesied during the days of Elisha. But here's the other thing. We know Jehu went above and beyond. But the things that he did do was enough that God was pleased, the initial ones, that he told him for four generations he would leave his family, his lineage, as king. But he was not, he did not do what God, uh, he wasn't careful to obey God. And so we know 
some things. He, God gave him the four generations. After that, it was over. Not going to go all into that, trying to stay in what we're going to be reading and bringing that understanding and that clarity. But again, again, saints, it is about the choices that we make. It is about the people that we align ourselves up with. Breadcrumb, pay attention. Look for those who love God, who want to obey God and are diligent in doing so. Because if not, the consequences are great. I love that, again, it, when we start our reading, warnings come forth. As we continue to read and then even at the end, there's still warning. But God brings forth what God intended to do. Bread come. God's intended purposes will be accomplished. And he knows the means and the measures in which it will take in order for that to come to pass. So, again, we need to align ourselves with God and know what God is saying and what God is doing. The book of uh, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, even in the Chronicles, it's a history book. But what we need to understand is that the writer is God himself, the Holy Spirit. And God gets to choose what he wants to put in his book. And I love that because we learn more about his two prophets and what they did and what they were doing to glorify God than even some of the kings that reigned. But last breadcrumb, final one is, we may see darkness and we may see wickedness and it looks like it's prospering and advancing, but saints, be not afraid and be not bamboozled or persuaded because the truth is God is still on the throne. He is Lord of all, King of all, and at his appointed time, God will deal with that situation. He told us that vengeance is his and it is. So what is our posture breadcrumb? When we see things, even in the current days, we continue to pray. We continue to believe God. And we in, in continue to know that at his appointed time and season, God is going to intervene. Last breadcrumb. Not a word that comes out of the mouth of God or a word that is written by God, not the feelings of men, but by God. Not one of his words will fall to the ground and not come to pass. We can trust God. We can believe God. Great is his faithfulness and he will do it. And in the meantime, let's make right choices. Trust God. Believe God. Keep on praying and keep on declaring he is the Lord. He is great and worthy to be praised. Enjoy your reading and God bless you. And see all the twist and the turn that God wanted us to see, to understand, so that we can know that wickedness only leads in one direction, and that's destruction. And that is why we must be careful. Breadcrumb remain on the path of righteousness. And if we find ourselves that we have veered off or we've received information that we should not and we listen to that, when we come to ourselves, repent, ask God for forgiveness, and then get back on the path following Jesus, being led by the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Amen.